Hey, welcome back to the channel. Our last video was looking at the difference between single and dual glass solar panels. And from that video, we got some excellent feedback and some questions. So that inspired me to do a little bit more investigating some testing. In the comments from that video, some folks reported that they've had excellent performance out of these Hyperion 400 watt bifacial solar panels. But some folks said they'd read some bad reviews about them and that the performance wasn't that great. This inspired me to do some testing and set up a test where I could compare the Hyperion 400 watt panels to another panel of similar size. And I'm using another panel that I've already had in my system and I've seen the performance and it's performed well. So let's take a look. To test these panels, I set up a comparison with my SEG 405 watt panels that are presently installed in my system. The SEG panels are also 108 cell panels. They have similar voltage. While they're rated at slightly higher wattage, the difference is only around 1% and I could adjust for this difference easily. So to compare these panels at normal operating voltage and power, we installed six of the Hyperion panels in the same array as six of the SEG panels. I've also been using these SEG panels for over a year in my other arrays, and I've recorded peak performance levels pretty close to the maximum rated wattage. So I know these SEG panels perform well throughout the year. My thought was that if I can compare the two panels side by side, we can test the difference in performance under similar solar conditions. And looking at the results, we may spot any significant performance differences between these panels, and that should tell us what to expect between the Hyperion 400 watt panels and another panel. I started testing on Sunday afternoon and immediately noticed a large difference in performance. This really surprised me, and for a moment there, I thought these Hyperion 400 watt panels were performing at less than half of the SEG panels. When I went out to check these panels, I noticed that the Hyperion panels were getting some shading that the SEG panels were not. Oh, it was no. late in the day, so I went ahead and postponed the rest of the testing until the next day. The next morning, I started monitoring the panel output at the inverter. The sun was fully up at 10 a.m. Now remember, this was late December, which is absolutely the worst time of year for solar performance. Since they're both being evaluated equally, we should see any difference at that point. Here's what my readings look like hourly from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. Man, they're close. Okay, 11 a.m., maybe one voltage, maybe two voltage. Maybe one wattage. PV2 wattage. Okay, PV1. PV2. PV1. PV2. All right, one o'clock. PV1. PV2, PV1, PV2. All right, two o'clock, PV1. PV2, voltage. PV1, wattage. PV2, wattage. I recorded each hour's readings on a spreadsheet, and I also noted the percentage of difference between the two panels. As you can see in the spreadsheet, power and performance varied between the panels throughout the day. By the end of the test, the results showed some differences in voltage and wattage, but these differences were very low, and just in the single percentage difference range. Statistically, these could be caused by various minor factors, such as clouds, wind, temperature, and rear reflection. But overall, I don't believe these differences were statistically significant. But if you want to say they are, then the difference between the panels might be two to 4% max. To sum it up, from my observation, any performance difference between the panels is certainly in the single digit percentage difference. Comparing this to the cost difference between the panels, this realistically equates to no more than like maybe 5% for panel difference in cost. So if comparing the Hyperion bifacial panels to the SCG bifacial panels, I probably wouldn't pay more than five bucks per panel for the latter. 
in my case, I purchased the SEG panels on sale for $122 each buying a pallet. So pallet of the Hyperion panels would have been a much better deal at $88 each, and that would have saved you like $1,224 at today's prices. So what do you think of my test results and testing methods? Do you agree that the performance variance is small? Do you think the performance difference would be higher in a different season? What other panels do you think I should be testing against these Hyperion 400 watt bifacial panels? I really appreciate the video feedback I received from my viewers and subscribers. I also appreciate you being a part of the DIY solar community. If you haven't already, I'd encourage you to join the DIY Solar Forum. This is an online DIY solar forum started by Will Prouse, and it's a place you can find answers to many solar questions. Its members have extensive solar experience and are willing to share their valuable solar knowledge. I also appreciate you using my discount codes and affiliate links in my video descriptions. Most of my equipment came from Signature Solar, and I only recommend them because I've had positive experience with their customer service and solar equipment. At Two Steps From Off Grid, our mission is to educate and inspire you to learn new DIY skills that help you build resilient systems to power your own independent lifestyle. We want to build a community that shares our interests in these goals. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and give it, this video a thumbs up. This tells the YouTube algorithm that you enjoy this kind of content and would like to see some more of it. Hey, I'm Michael from Terry Hill Farm, where we're trying to live two steps from off-grid. I appreciate you watching.